So hi, my name is Jean-Michel Jarre, and we are here in my, the main cabin of my recording studio outside Paris. And uh, I would like to talk to you about how I worked uh, around for my uh, new studio album called Electronica. And it's a very special project. What? No, not yet. Uh, this project is quite special because it's all about, um, uh, it's my new studio album, but involving a lot of different collaborations and uh, um, collaborations in a very special way with people who have been or are a source of inspiration to me and also who are directly linked to the electronic scene. It has nothing to do with a kind of featuring album, but it's we are talking there about uh, true collaborations with uh, with different artists. So it took me a lot of time, almost five years since the beginning of the conception to today. And uh, actually, uh, I traveled a lot uh, physically, not just sending files through the internet. I mean, to be in studio, I spent lots of time in studio to record and for recording sessions and uh, mixing in different cities. I mean, mainly Los Angeles and also here. And uh, I took care of the final mix, whatever, and the final production. And I would like to talk to you uh, today, choosing one track. And for instance, the track I've done with Air. And uh, we did the uh, production both here in this studio, uh, this cabin, the big studio, just on the other wall, on the other side, the, the other side of this wall, and also in their studio in the central Paris. And uh, I did the final mix here mainly. And uh, this is a, a track uh, called Close Your Eyes. I did this uh, project mainly on uh, Live Ableton 9 as a do. And uh, mixing the idea behind the track was actually, and it's quite fun and quite relevant about uh, what we are talking uh, about today, is uh, about mixing and, and this track is visiting or revisiting all I mean, four decades of electronic instruments, starting by the very first instruments I used when I was a teenager uh, studying at the uh, Research Music Center, the GRM, uh, with Pierre Schaeffer and Pierre Henry and all this great figure of electronic music, uh, where uh, dealing with uh, old oscillators and, and valves in equipment, Bob's equipment, and also uh, doing uh, loops with tapes and all that, and we. I'll go back to this in a, mo in a minute. Then moving to uh, uh, the first modular Moog, or the first modular synthesizer, then polyphonic analog synthesizers, then uh, uh, the first samplers, such as the Fairlight, and moving to the um, uh, hardware digital keyboards, to plugins, and the last sound of the, uh, of the project is, has been made with um, uh, apps on iPad. So it's, we are talking with this track about actually a kind of panorama of, of uh, uh, electronic uh, music, uh, electronic instruments of the past four, four decades. So we have a hell of, a, of, of tracks, I think 90 tracks or something, I suppose. And I would like to go through the session a, li a little bit with you. And uh, what I've done is actually uh, in a total disorder. One of the main sequences I did with the R2600 was this. And then I, I, did, I did this with a hardware R2600, on which I, I used an analog delay made with a tape Revox, and then replaced later on with uh, some, uh, some delay somewhere. Probably here with the H delay, which is here. But it was better to replace this. And we, it was before when I did this sound, uh, one of my favorite plugin delays were not released yet is from Native Instruments Replica, which is, in my opinion, even better than, than much better than this one. But when we, I mixed this one, Replica was not there, so I used that. And uh, um, then I, I uh, in in this track I used also uh, some uh, old drum machines. So this is something that I've done with um, uh, with a mini pop that actually I resampled. 
I keep the, the real mini pop and then I I then I, I resampled uh, the drum the drum machine and I put a, a small stone phase uh, electro harmonics small stone one of my favorite phase of all time uh, hardware one and uh, I uh, and, and then I this is actually basically the the, the um, basically the um, uh, the main part of the rhythmic uh, beat for this uh, for for this um, for this track. And then I moved to uh, lots of other things, and also Air did their their part with uh, lots of other instruments they they love, and also we used um, some of the. Um, uh, vocoda, let me check where we are. This is a very interesting convolution rev reverb uh, from uh, Max for Live, which I use a lot. This one is a very interesting one, uh, very pure sound. Uh, let me check where I'm there. I have a solo. Some I have a solo somewhere. Yeah. Of a, of a vocoder. Let me let me find the uh, the right track. Right, uh, the vocoder track should be yes, new vocoder. If there is a new vocoder, that means that we had an old vocoder, and uh, because the first vocoder we I used was a kind of uh, cog they were using, and we were not very happy with the sound, so we choose to. Uh, to go with an, an old, um, uh, an, an another vocoder called the VP550, uh, a Roland VP550, which was, I think, more or less a kind of commercial failure. And I always liked uh, commercial failure in terms of hardware synthesizers because they always have something unique. By And uh, the VP550 is probably one of the best uh, uh, vocal processor effects because for, for Two different reasons: the, the quality of the of the processing, but also the fact that you can, in the hardware, I mean, mixing your you, the, the the dry sound, which is most of the time uh, not the case for vocoder, where you have problem of um, of um, uh, understand the the, the, the the syllabs and the, and the words as we know. So we we use that, and they use that. I mean, Nicole, Nicole and Jean Benoit did a great job, and we actually recorded. The first try here in this to in this place and then they finalized the the old sound in their studio and this is the switch me on play my sound a really great sound and close your eyes then we moved towards the end to a, a different kind of sound, and also uh, it all, in all, almost all my tracks, I like to use maybe by superstition or habits my one of my first synthesizers of all time, the VCS3 or the AKS. We used to call this sound Arlet, which is a kind of uh, old, very old French first name from one century ago. And uh, this is the one I'm talking about, which is one of the sound I use a lot uh, in uh, uh, in oxygen, for instance. And that we so it would it would be cool to use it in this track. It's kind of a tamed theremin. And then in the in the within the track, it does this.
And then I use also another of my favorite instruments in terms of hardware, which is the Eminent. And the Eminent is the, the what makes 40% 40, 40 of the sound of um, oxygen. It's this fantastic string ensemble, which is actually better than the Solina because it's like uh, Solina is using one chorus in, where this uh, Eminent organ is, is using three choruses. But it gives you a much richer, it's like a super so but with three choruses. It gives very nice, rich pad and string ensemble uh, that actually no plugin are really replacing in that case. Let me show you what it is. And then I used to uh, use some delays on the right side to make it much wider on the other track it's a, it's a bit of a trick on the live Ableton to be able to get uh, one mono track and the delay on the right side but it creates this kind of uh, spacey type of, um, of, of effect and uh, then I used also for the end of the track also some um, lo lots of other plugins like the uh, then also some plugins like the Monarch and uh, let's see the Monarch is somewhere here and I don't remember what's in this yes I used it I mean to get uh, a simple sound of uh, actually to I wanted to have the um, the sound of a um, pedal organ, a very low sound. And actually, the one I had was not working. So I used the Monarch, which I like very much. I mean, the Monarch is probably one of the best plugin to uh, very close to the Mini Moog. Very, very close. Much closer than actually uh, the hardware version of the new the Voyager, for instance, is not as close, it's a different instrument, as close as the Mini Moog D than the Monarch, which is very, very faithful to. To this and with the, in the context of the track it creates this which you which you don't obviously feel but that suddenly gives you the kind of depth where when you are when you are that kind of um, uh, quite uh, rich pads and most of the time you have a problem because you have too many uh, you are too rich in a high mid and, and it lacks the, the low mid and, and, and the mid. And this kind of sounds allow you follow, following the harmony to, to give you more, more depth. And uh, I, I did also for the real bass some, uh, some sub, but I, I did uh, with, um, uh, with a torus. Torus smoke, the real one. And one of the last sound I used, I did it with uh, the iPad and with a, a, a plugin, a, a, a nap I really like, which is the Animog from Moog. And this is one of the last, the last sounds of that track. In the context, it makes this. And the old, the old trick with the old trick, the old thing, the fun thing with this is actually we're using so many instruments from different generations but when you listen to the track you can't really tell and that was also one one of the fun thing we had in studio working on this track so actually one one of the first sound of this uh, um, track close your eyes with air is actually uh, we we had the idea that uh, it could be cool to start uh, the track with uh, uh, how we were working with electronic music back in the middle of the 20th century. 
even when I was uh, not born, some people were starting, I mean, doing some uh, uh, electronic sounds with oscillators coming from laboratories, obscure laboratories and all this, the pre-Doctor Who type of sounds. And uh, so I got a very old uh, sound generators uh, from the uh, public French public radio, the equivalent of the BBC uh, studio, uh, where everything started actually far before anything, where uh, these guys I mean invented and created everything. People such as Pierre Henry and Pierre Schaeffer, I mean, did I mean invented basically what sound design is all about today in electronic music with DJs and all that. And uh, uh, we, uh, we got the idea to uh, actually starting the, this with some frequencies coming from these oscillators and doing a loop where uh, the way we were doing loops in those days, before, far before sequences. And uh, I'm going to show you how, how I did it with scissors, cell tape, cell tape and tape recorder. And uh, this is the, the result in the track. This this loop actually has not has been done with uh, samples I recorded with different uh, different type of strange noise and sounded that we recorded on the other the other side of that room and then putting together in a, in a, in a, in loop and I will going to show you how I did it in one minute and this is in the context of the track what it's all about and then the is I I actually. Um, crossfading it in in uh, with the the sound of the drum machine I was talking to you about uh, the the um, the core mini pops, and this is like that. So the frequencies behind with the first the Cupini, the, the first synth I was talking to you about. And then the drum machine is uh, synchronized on... And then the R2600 sequences, then the pads, the eminent, and then... Typical riff piano from air. And then the vocoder and the track develops. So I... For this, I mixed with lots of uh, live plugins. Uh, I love the live plugins. They are simple. They're not greedy in terms of CPUs and much better than we lots of people could think. I, I, I used a lot the glue compressor, which is very handy for, for compressing bass sounds and, and, and some percussion sounds. And also, I, in that track, I had some uh, returns here, basically, Two convolution reverb pro, yeah, this kind of reverb. I use uh, the uh, uh, the delay also. I was talking to you about the H delay and some external revox delay and extra external hardware reverb also, which are not visible here, obviously. And uh, I used, uh, as I said. Uh, the uh, the monarch I really like. I don't. Uh, it's not there anymore. But uh, yeah. But let's talk about this, for instance. You know, for instance, in that case, I used a lot of this very simple EQ I I really like because when you when you play, you can see. Very handy for simple. I mean, I, lots of equalizers are doing this, but you know, you have you see the, the shape of the of, of of that. Lots of equalizer, but taking lots more um, uh, um, CPU are doing this, and I, I like this. I like very much the uh, punch compressor. I mean, this one. This one I like, and the the reverb when I just want kind of standard reverb. Otherwise, I like uh, to use the uh, uh, lexicon plate. I, I love the plate, the sound of plates. And, and unfortunately, lots of plugins, except in big, uh, uh, 
big plugins such as the EMT-140, EMT-250 from Universal Audio, but it requires a hardware. When you are traveling, it's not really, uh, really good. You, you have uh, the lexicon plate reverb is great. The, and, uh, and also, uh, I'm using also the new uh, plugins from IRCAM. I really recommend this. Uh, it's Flux distributing the, this, these plugins, and uh, they're absolutely fantastic in terms of Freebird and, and sound processing. So the way I did this uh, first loop in the track is actually by uh, using uh, sellotape and scissors. And then uh, in those days we had no uh, we had no sequencer. And actually, when you are at 120 BPM, for instance, it makes uh, uh, two seconds for a bar, right? And uh, uh, then you had to calculate what an eighth note and a fourth note will be in terms of uh, centimeters with uh, 38 centimeters per second or 15, 15 inches per, per second, if you're English, and, uh, and, uh, and calculate what makes the eighth note and the, the fourth note to create your, your beat. And then, and then having this kind of, I don't know if you see this properly, but you know, you have yeah. all these little piece of tape, you know, to to create to create the the beat, and then looping the, this bit of tape, having this being played by the tape recorder, and having I mean, getting the loop on the mic stand uh, to to make it turn infinitely, and then just press play. <laughs> This is the way I did the first loop and then mixing this to the mini pop cork drum machine for the beginning of the track. To film this you will see the uh, the sellotape going on there. That's a good example. Okay, 